to get a feel for the type of motorcycles that were roaring down the roads of US in the 1940s, we are reviewing a 1947 Harley Davidson L Bobber. The 1940s were a tumultuous time in the United States, with most young American men serving overseas either in Europe or in the Pacific for the first half of the decade. When World War II finally ended in 1945, waves of American GIs began to return home, ready to get a taste of that freedom they had been fighting for. While some chose to settle down and raise a family, there were still plenty of others who were ready to cut loose behind the wheel of a hot rod automobile or behind the bars of a Bob Job motorcycle. The terms Bobber or Bob Job both refer to the same style of motorcycle, that being one that has been stripped of all unnecessary parts, which often includes ditching the front fender altogether and shortening or bobbing the rear fender. Bob Jobs first became popular in the 1930s when Harley and Indian started fielding stripped-down machines for the newly organized Class C races. Many riders appreciated the no-nonsense look of these new race bikes and Harley-Davidson debuted the U-Series in 1937 as a replacement for the V-Series which had been their primary line of big twins since 1930. One of the most notable improvements found on the, the U-Series was a new design which recirculated the oil from the oil tank, through the engine and back to the oil tank. Up until 1936, all Harley-Davidson motorcycles used total loss systems which essentially ran the oil from the oil tank, through the engine and ultimately onto the ground. The standard Ull motor is a 74 cubic inch, V-twin, although this particular machine has been upgraded to 80 cubic inches with aftermarket pistons and cylinders from S, and is a side valve configuration. This means that the intake and exhaust valves are located in the cylinders, adjacent and parallel to the cylinder boards. The valves are actuated by four gear-driven cams hafts, one per valve, and use adjustable tappets to maintain precise spacing between the cam lobs and the valve stems. Although the cylinder heads do not contain any moving parts, they do play an important role in cooling the engine. Initially Harley-Davidson outfitted the U-Series motors with cast iron cylinder heads, but soon switched to aluminum alloy heads for improved cooling. Fuel and Air the braking system on the UL is your standard 1940s technology using front and rear drum brakes. Like most of Harley's early braking systems, the front brake leaves a lot to be desired and your main braking comes from the larger rear drum. Both brakes are completely manual with no hydraulic assistance. The front uses a cable to connect a right side mounted hand lever to a left side mounted drum. The rear uses a series of adjustable rods to transmit the motion of the right side brake pedal through the frame and out to the left side mounted rear drum. The all rides on a hard tail frame, which means there is no rear suspension whatsoever. The lack of rear suspension is partially negated by the use of a sprung solo seat. This design works like a pogo stick in that there are a number of springs mounted on a single shaft inside the rear frame down tube and connected to the middle of the seat pan. A pivot point at the front of the seat is attached to the top of the frame to provide extra stability and only allows the seat to move up and down. The only real suspension on. By the 1940s, Harley had come up with a dash design that they would essentially keep for the next 75 years. At the center is a large face speedometer, you'll note that this bobber is using an original police unit, and a key 3 position ignition switch. There are two indicator lights between the ignition switch and the speedometer which include a low oil pressure light and a non-charging generator light. As with modern day motorcycles, 
the right hand grip controls the throttle. The right side also has the front brake lever. Technically, the front brake lever should be on the left hand side of the handlebar, but when switching between modern and classic motorcycles, some consistency is nice, especially in an emergency. The left hand grip operates the timing, allowing you to retard the timing for easy starting and advance the timing for normal running. The horn button and the high slash low beam switch for the headlight is located on the left side handlebar as well. Shifting is accomplished using a hand lever that is attached to the left side of the fuel tank. A shift gate helps the rider find the gears without skipping gears when shifting. The foot operated clutch, known. The first thing that struck me about this motorcycle was how easy it was to start. The low compression flathead motor was no problem to kick over and with a little practice could probably be done from a seated position. The seat itself was very comfortable, with the wide supportive seat pan that has been the favorite of mounted police officers for years, police spend long hours on their motorcycles, so they know which seats are the best. The seating position is upright with your knee bent at a 90 degree angle when your feet are resting on the floorboards. The bars are wide and low, which provides great leverage at low speeds, but in tight turns the hand grips will contact your legs. I found the floorboards to be comfortable for my feet but could have used a little extra room on the left side as the clutch pedal covers a good portion of the floorboard. Once onto the road, I was impressed by how easily the transmission shifted gears. It is not uncommon to really have to jam on the shift lever to change gears on a vintage motorcycle, but this transmission was as smooth a butter. All it needed was a